made up and went to sleep. I woke up an hour later and had the urge to see her phone, which I've never done in five years. When I got to it, I found 50 plus explicit pictures and videos of herself and pictures of another guy's private parts. Welcome back to They Did What? Your source for the internet's craziest, most entertaining stories where I go over them, analyze them, and most certainly make fun of them. Today, I'm going to go over a story titled, My Wife Cheated and I Never Saw It Coming. And guys, this story is about a guy, a young guy, who got married way too young, didn't know his girl well enough, and to no surprise, the stereotypical things that happen nowadays happen to him. And you're going to see, guys, how ultimately he is going to wise up and kick her to the curb, but not after dealing without dealing with a lot of pain. And this is another example of the world we're in right now, Psalm Gomorrah 2.0, where essentially every day these stories come about, probably the ones I do, or maybe somebody that you know or happen to yourself, uh, they catch their girlfriend, their wife, fiance, having uh, online affairs, and they're sending pictures to other dudes, one dude or many dudes, videos, they got pictures of their phone in that guy's private areas, that type of stuff, or worse, cheating, open marriages, it's crazy. And this is another example to show you guys why I have my opinion about marriage nowadays, in, in particularly the 2020s and the mindset that a lot of these young gals had there in their teens, 20s, and 30s. It's just, it's a mess. But ultimately, you'll see this guy does kick this girl to the curb. But also, I want to point this out because, you know, I do like to point out some very common sense things in here. This is another guy that uh, put his girl on the pedestal, who made all these sacrifices for, for, for her to make things easier for her, and this is how she thanked him. So it goes to show that guys should never do that because there are plenty out there that will be more than happy to take advantage of. But anyhow, enough of that for the intro. I'm going to get into the story here. So it starts off, he says, uh, I met her when I was 26 years old. I never really believed in love, but when I met her, my God, my heart stopped. Dude, it's a chick. Who cares? It's a piece of ass. She had an amazing smile that could light up any room. After dating for two years, we got married. Smack. Two years. Okay, you were 28, so that's not ridiculously young, like being 21 years old or something like that. But still, two years? You need to be with her for much more than two years to get to know someone. Anybody can put up an act for two years to show you what they want you to see. And by the way, if he's 28 when they got married, she's around that age range. She was probably looking for her nice guy to settle down with. That's usually around that time period. Mid-20s when a lot of gals look for that nice guy, that, no offense, sucker, that uh, would be happy to take her in. And then she does what she does. Uh, we were extremely goofy, and she always wanted to be with me. We worked together in the same shift, so we saw each other all the time. Two problems there. We were goofy together. Believe me, women are not drawn to guys that act goofy, okay? Those are their buddies who they hang out with, okay? Or they settle for. So right there, that's a problem, okay? There's, there's, there's funny being witty, but not acting like a freaking clown, but being goofy. And two, they work together. Same shift. Bad idea. They need distance for her to wonder about him and miss him and all that. This is another bad thing here. You can see already this thing's going downhill. Two years, rushing into marriage, goofy. Uh, work in the same shift. Anyhow, he says, after a year of us being married, we decided to start a family. I was on second shift with her with a great position, but I made the decision to move to first shift from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. so when the baby would be there, I could help out. This hit me hard as I had a good position and now it was just an LTO, but I kept telling myself that I was doing this for my future family. After a year trying, we had bad news from two different doctors that she had PCOS and the odds of us having a child would be very low. This was difficult because both of us wanted a family. Consider this a blessing in disguise. A blessing from the Lord or the universe or whomever. Because it, because you're going to see what happens here. But ultimately, well, uh, we kept trying as other options would be too expensive. Since our odds were low, I decided to, start to apply for a high-paying job, but it was going to be for the third shift. My mindset was to get this job and save money so maybe we could get an IVF. I got the job and started working on May 1st. So you can see here, in spite of him obviously putting her on the pedestal, he's wanting to make a lot of sacrifices 
for her and the future family. This is a good man. He's just clueless in different areas. Good man. Think she cares? Nope. On July 3rd, we went clubbing and with my friends and cousin. And while at the club, I noticed her texting someone. I asked, I asked for her to let me see who she's texting, and she said no. I got upset, and later she told me that, that a guy she knew from school was there, and she asked him to buy her a drink. Asked him to buy her a drink, and she's texting with him? Shouldn't be texting other dudes, let alone, why is she asking this guy to buy her a drink? She's got a husband. He can buy her a drink. Or better yet, she's got an American Express card or some cash. She can go buy a drink. These are all red flags. <clears throat> I got mad and when we got home, we had an argument. We made up and went to sleep. I woke up an hour later and had the urge to see her phone, which I've never done in five years. When I got to it, I found 50 plus explicit pictures and video of herself and pictures of another guy's private parts. There you go. Two years he, he dated her and got married. He obviously didn't know the real her. And I might add that obviously their testing showed that they couldn't have children. Now, it didn't say it was because of her or because of him. They, they didn't uh, elaborate that, or the guy didn't really get in detail about that. But the point is, I got to wonder if she's now trying to sabotage things, or this is just who she was all along, or both. Right then and there, goodbye, end of story. I confront her, and she admitted that she slept with him once, and that she's been sexting since mid-May. So two months. Not only, not only that, but her tone and the way she looked at me changed. She told me that you could never give me a child. Also, she said, you know what? I always wanted a piece of Puerto Rico. I left home and stayed with my parents. Why is this guy leaving? Why isn't he telling her to pack up her shit and she can get the hell out and go stay with her parents? Yes, he shouldn't be around her right now, but seriously, it's always the guy that leaves. It's ridiculous. So right there, she doesn't care. Says she always wants a piece of Puerto Rico. She wants her bad boy. This killed me as she was the first woman I truly ever loved, and I made so many sacrifices for her. Well, she's probably going to be the last woman he ever loves. After this, she never made any effort to win me back. In fact, I was the one chasing her. Smack. You shouldn't be chasing her. You should be getting a divorce. You should be talking to a, a divorce attorney. If there's any chasing that should be going on, it should be her chasing this guy. But she obviously knows this guy is smitten over her. She obviously knew when she got together with him, you can tell here by her actions, found her nice guy. First girl he ever loved, that type of crap. All of him, the sacrifices and things he was doing to make her happy, make things easier on her. White knight shit, put her on the pedestal. Now you do things for your girl if she's good to you and it's reciprocated, not just to please her and hope that she'll treat you better or maybe on occasion suck your you-know-what. But chasing after her after she cheated, that's only communicating weakness. That's going to make her have less respect for this guy. But these young guys don't know. They don't know. They don't have the experience. They don't have a man to teach them these things. The movies certainly teach, lead them astray. Uh, a week after I found out, she told me she'd been talking to another guy, and they met up and kissed. I was such a fool that I still wanted to forgive her. She never made any effort. So I started no contact, and she started calling me and texting me, telling me she loves me, and to take her back. But again, made no effort to win me back. She was doing the bare minimum just to hopefully get this guy back. Not because she loves him, but because obviously this guy's a meal ticket, right? She figures this guy's a nice guy. He's weak, right? Chasing after me after he knew I was cheating on him. So I can get him back, and he keep paying the bills, and I'll sweet talk him, but then I'll go back to having my piece of Puerto Rico, whatever she said there. That's how it works. Rinse, recycle, repeat. And these set, these guys, a lot of them go for this. Said here, she said she won't stop talking to him unless I take her back. I finally realized that she was just manipulating me and taking advantage of how, I, how I'm in love with her, etc., etc. Yeah, that's exactly what she was doing. He had to go through this shit to really learn this. Now it's been almost a month and I'm filing for divorce and selling my beautiful home. She said that the spark was gone, but not once did she communicate. Instead, she acted super happy, lovable. I love her so much, but I have to realize I am in love with someone that doesn't love me. Thank you for reading my story. So, yeah, again, classic example. This, you know, this guy's obviously a good guy. I mean, let's be—he's just clueless and and very naive. 
wasn't taught things he needed to know that so many young guys need to know. And look what happened. But at least now that's it. it's over, it's done. And yeah, he he loved what he thought she was. But again, this is why you take longer than two freaking years to be. So I would say, bare minimum, bare minimum five years. Some people would be appalled by this, but hey, given these stories, you need at least five years, in my opinion, to really see who someone is as best possible. Find what they're like, what they're like with money how they are with communication, how they resolve problems, what are their families like. These are all things that are going to impact a guy. And the final test, if you're going to get married, is move in with them, only to see what they're like living with. Are they going to lose their shit if you accidentally leave the toilet seat up? Or you forget to take the garbage out one night, or, or stupid shit like that. Is she going to try to get you to stop hanging out with your friends? Does she? Is she going to let herself go to shit when you move in with her? With her hair sticking up like the Bride of Frankenstein and dressing in like uh, pajamas that she hasn't w- washed in three weeks, that type of stuff. You know, all these little things. Is she going to start to let herself go? Is the SEX going to abruptly change? These are things you find out with moving with your girl as a final test if you get married. Even then, I think you're crazy to do it nowadays. So now I'm going to read a few comments here. Show you that other guys are thinking the same thing. But, but let me just finish up saying that it's over. It's done and over with. This guy should not go back with her. I think this article is recent, okay? Find a good divorce attorney. Find out all your options, good, bad, or ugly, and cut her loose out of your life, okay? And then next time around, because he said this is the first girl I ever loved, and probably this will be the last, but you never know, really take your time. Okay. One guy says, man, this sucks. You should get a fertility test. It might not be you at fault. If your soon-to-be ex-wife is screwing another dude and she's not yet knocked up, she might have faulty eggs. Get your fertility results, and if your swimmers are good, throw it in her face at the divorce proceedings. I mean, the results are not your swimmers. Yeah. How do you know it's him? How do you know it's not her? Another guy says, that's not how love works. When you love someone and they love you back, this is real love. It takes more than one person. What you describe as being codependent. See a shrink before you get into another relationship and learn self-respect, or the next one will be worse. Absolutely. This guy needs to work on himself for a while and find out why he is this way with this particular chick and so giving and this and it's a good point about codependency. Another guy says, continue with the divorce. Even if she tries to win you back, you cannot trust her motives. She's definitely not a good candidate for reconciling. You will find another that will be trustworthy. Instead of reconciling with your soon-to-be ex, knowing that she cannot be trusted, you cannot live your life in doubt. If this guy got back with her, he'd be spending every waking moment wondering who she's texting with, who is she talking to when she claims she's, you know, uh, talking to her mom or her sister or her friends, right? He's not going to trust her when she's out. When they're actually hooking up, he's going to imagine some other dude you know what in her mouth. You get my point. Guys, don't forget. So this is just a bad situation, best to part ways. And he takes her back, she'll never respect him. Ever. It'll be worse. That one says, good for you that you're getting out. Stay no contact. She'll be back eventually, probably with someone else's kid, because she discovered that it's easy to find a guy that will get her pregnant, but hard to get one that will stick around after after that. That's when she'll try to rope you back in. Very good point. And in this particular comment, the poster here responded to that. Now listen to this. This is from the guy telling the story. He said, I said, yeah, she called me on Friday crying, saying to take her back, that she wants to get pregnant and only wants my baby. I soon realized that she used that to manipulate me and to make me feel bad and sad so I can still talk to her. I'm not falling for that trap anymore. Thank you for your advice. There you go. Probably her Chad and Tyrone lover, she realizes, ain't going to be the type of guy she thought he was. So now she wants to go back to this guy here. and But this guy ain't having it. Thank the Lord. But anyhow, guys, perfect example. What happens? You rush into marriage, rush into relationships, make all these sacrifices that put harm on you and cause you to suffer just to make her happy. It's only going to make things worse. And I might add, you can't always ever make them all happy. It just doesn't work that way. Bad boys always put themselves first and always check their women. Nice guys always put the woman first on the pedestal and they never check them. Those are the two main differences. You can be a good guy and not be an a-hole or, or a, a thug or anything like that, but have a couple bad boy traits and it'll put you at light years ahead of everybody else. Because women do not respect men. They don't love men that they don't respect. Never happen, never will. And they will eventually either break up with them or cheat on them. And there are plenty of gals out there that have no conscience, no no morals, no soul, and will, and will see that weakness as something like, hey, he's that weak, so I'm going to exploit it. 
And there's so many guys out there that think, hey, I finally got this pretty girl that's talking to me and give me the bare minimum, but that's good enough for me. And they'll shell out all these things and get just really screwed over. Can't be that way. This is why my other channel, Strong Successful Male, I'm really about t teaching and preaching and all that about men building themselves up to be the best they can be. Because when they're doing that and feeling good, they're not going to settle for these types of gals and, and put up with shit like this. And they're certainly not going to, you know, be givers and never and, uh, and, and never get anything in return and amongst the many other things. They won't tolerate that crap. But when a guy doesn't think highly of himself, thinks that this is as good as it's going to get, so I'll just do whatever I can to make her happy, this type of shit happens. When you work on yourself and build yourself up, the odds of this type of stuff is not going to happen at least as much because you won't tolerate it. So, all right, guys, that was it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And, guys, you come across a really good story you'd like to share, by all means, email it to me, strongsuccessfulmail at gmail.com. Just give me some time to get to it. And if it's a good story online, like a Reddit story, which a lot of these are, be sure to include the link to it, and I'll get to it when I can. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.